Right. Today I'm going to be showing you how to uh, plumb an unloader kit onto a pump. I'm going to be plumbing an HWD 5530 pump, but um, any pump, the uh, way you're going to plumb it is going to be pretty similar. I will say that there's multiple ways to plumb a pump, but I'm going to be showing you pretty much the textbook way to plumb your pressure washer pump. Um, inside our unloader kit comes a bunch of uh, parts here. We got the unloader itself. I got a garden hose uh, adapter, bypass hose, two different elbows which are completely optional and I'll show you where they go if you want to use them. I got some barbs, thermal valve, and a 3 8 of an inch plug. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be installing the thermal valve. Uh, it's the easiest part and it always goes. Uh, on the side closest to the engine, opposite uh, your intake. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this part. And from the factory, most pumps, everything's going to be uh, Loctite it on, that's all this debris coming off. That's thread sealer or Loctite. You know, I just always make sure I clean it up a little bit. You don't want to leave any debris behind, especially anything you can get out. Uh, once I got it out, I'm going to use my own Vibratite or uh, thread lock. Uh, you don't want to use a permanent kind because you want to be able for this to come back off sometime in the future in case you ever want to replace it. And that went on pretty easily. Um, whenever you tighten stuff up to your pump, you want it to be nice and snug, but you don't want to go crazy as far as how tight it is um, because the brass is a soft metal. And with my bare hands, if I really tried, I could probably crack this pump. So before I do that, it's nice and snug. I leave it on there. I always like to point this nozzle straight down. The reason is when water does come out of here, it will be extremely hot. If it's pointed up, that hot water could shoot up and hit you in the face. If it's pointed out, it could get on your legs. If it's pointed down, it's pretty safe. So that's that part, uh, pretty simple. Uh, this top one, we're not gonna remove, so you can just leave that one in place. I'm gonna go ahead and go to this side of the pump. Uh, so remove some of these plastic caps that it came with. All right, so I got those caps out. And obviously I'm gonna get this guy down here and I wanna put this guy up here. The unloader has to go first because if not, you're gonna run into a problem where this is gonna be contacting the bottom one. You'll never be able to tighten it up. And as you can see, these are both female and uh, that's where this uh, male to male 3 8 thread comes in handy. It's gonna go right there, pretty easy. My trick to doing this, once again, a little bit more of the uh, thread lock. I'm just going to put this in by hand, just like that. Put a little bit more thread on this side. And now, making sure my direction is correct, in, out, I'm just going to thread this on. And as I tighten this up, the entire adapter in there is going to spin, thus tightening it up. Give it a few turns. That feels nice and tight. I like to make sure it's pointing straight up and down. Um, if you have an unloader without an easy valve, it doesn't really matter which way it points. But if your unloader does have an easy start valve, it must be in an up and down position. If it's sideways, it might not function properly. So you should always keep that in mind. Right. So now I got that part on there. It's pretty straightforward. I'm going to go ahead and finish that off by putting my plug here. On some units, when you actually have this on an engine and on the frame, your frame comes up right in this area and you could run into a problem where you can't fit your hose here because of the frame. That's where this guy comes in. If I were to need it, I would install this here 
So it would kind of come to the side and my frame would probably be right in this area. It's not always necessary, but some frames need it, some frames don't. You could have also installed it here, thus turning it 45 degrees right at this spot. Uh, so if you're finding you have an issue with your frame, uh, this is exactly what you need. You could put it here, you could put it here, it's up to you. On that same note, that's what this is for. Uh, if you have that same frame issue right here, where you can't connect your hose because the frame's in the way, there's two ways you can attack that problem. You could either put this right there with this one plumb next to it, thus shooting it off to the side. You could even remove this brass part from this housing, install this right there, and then reinstall the end at the very edge of it. Those are your options of what you want to do with these 45 degree angles. Um, most of the time you order a pump or a plumbing kit. You don't always need them. Sometimes it, in our case, in our store, we just throw them in the box because it's optional. You use it if you don't. It's up to you. Right. So now I'm going to get in here and install this here. Uh, something I like to mention, you have this style Zim fill instead of the solid brass kinds. Um, this is a pot metal. It's not the strongest stuff in the world. So, you know, you could actually break it here if you are tightening it too much. So I'm just going to go ahead and install it. And as you can see, I definitely come in contact here a little bit, you know. Um, you can usually get it on, sometimes having to force it around. I've never had one break due to that. Um, so, you know, just expect that. You will contact the blue cap up against your unloader. Pretty normal. And like I said, I'm not going to go crazy tightening this up, but I do want it to be pretty snug. I don't know if I'll get it another way around. I'm definitely going to try. And you do want that blue cap to be facing the ground. So right now I'm pretty close. I need to turn it one more half turn. And that'll be all done. So right there, it's exactly what it's supposed to look like. We're pretty close to being done. Um, at this point, we're actually gonna install pretty much a, almost the single most important part um, that protects your pump, which is a bypass. And what a bypass does is when you release the trigger of your gun, it's gonna bypass the water coming out back to the inlet, thus allowing the water to recirculate. If you don't have a bypass on your pump, um, you're probably gonna cause pump damage. Uh, you know, every pump has to have a bypass on it of some kind. If your pump isn't bypassing water, you know, that pressure has nowhere to go and that's not a good sign. So, what I'm gonna do now is I need to remove this. Uh, you can get it out with the Allen key if you needed one. I'm also gonna remove this side. Uh, the bypass could really go on either side. Uh, I always prefer this side. The personal preference truth be told doesn't matter so I've exposed both these sides but I want to plug this side back off once again a little vibra tight get that in there so it seats at the bottom it's not very deep it's pretty much as deep as it's gonna go Yeah, and that's the bottom. I barely gave it a three quarters turn just after hand tightening. So this part people do struggle on. I get a lot of phone calls about this part, you know, because number one, we gotta get these barbs essentially here and here, and then we gotta force this hose over these barbs. It's a pretty tight fit. I would always advise to not install these first. The first thing we're actually gonna do is put the barbs on the hose and then we'll install it all on the pump. If you do it the other way around, when you're forcing this onto those barbs, you stand a good chance of scratching your hand up, cutting up your knuckles all across here. I've done it plenty of times. What I like to do, I got some multi-purpose grease here, and I actually, I'm gonna go ahead and lube the inside of this hose up. You know, a little bit of lubricant goes a long way. And I'm also going to do the barbs. 
Uh, it's going to help make it a lot easier, a lot less struggling, because this is going to be a really tight fit. And at first, you can kind of start it with your hand. Get it on there. It does tend to get real tight, real tough. I have a rubber mat here. If you have a nice piece of wood, you can do it against wood too. I wouldn't do it against metal because this is brass and you'll bang up all of your threads. But since I do have a rubber mat, I'm just going to go ahead and... You see it's all the way down. And that, I'm just going to repeat that process on this side. Get it started by my by hand. Got it on there pretty deep. It is past all the barbs. I want to see if I can at least push it a little bit further down. There we go. And that's seated all the way down. So now we got that part. Um, I always install the bottom one first. Just makes it easier in the long run. Once again, driver tight. We're not installing anything on this pump without putting something on these threads. Um, you know, when it's being used, uh, these things are literally vibrating at all times. Things will shake loose very easily. I'm using a 916 wrench just to tighten this down. You can use an adjustable wrench. If you have a 916 available, it makes this part just a little easier. Uh, this part is not actually going to be under high pressure. So you don't have to go too crazy, uh, you know, I'm feeling good amount of resistance. I'm done, you know, I don't have to go crazy. Um, this part's the trickier part, um, because when I, as I'm cranking this down, the hose is going to want to spin also. Um, that's why it's really good that we use the lubricant, that's going to help it spin freely, uh, the bar from the hose. Once again, a little bit of thread seal. Find it up there. And it takes a little patience to catch that thread sometimes. But once you get it going, there you go. Should be pretty good to go. Yeah. Like I said, if you don't use uh, any lubricant, Inside of the hose, this hose is going to want to twist on you and you'll have to hold it like this while tightening it down or else the whole hose is going to twist and rip, uh, you know, could potentially rip. That's another reason I use the lubricant because that barb is spinning freely in there. Makes my installation a little bit easier. It's nice and tight. Feels good. Pretty much almost 100% done. Just got to put my last little piece on here. Once again, some thread seal. And that is pretty much, at this point, fully plumbed. We got our thermal valve to protect the pump from overheating. We got our garden hose inlet where the water's coming in. We got our unloader. We got our outlet, we got our bypass. That's how you do it. Still have the two extra pieces in case you need them for your frame or whatnot. But that's pretty much how it's done in a nutshell.